little bit about the racket grip. People are saying, gee, do I have like a death grip on the racket or should it be loose? And I'm a tennis player. I've been playing for years and also a physics professor. And I've come to understand the physics of tennis, but also how it feels with the racket out on the court. So obviously, you can't design an experiment that's going to exactly duplicate what happens on the, on the court. But you can get some general rules and pretty much get a consensus as to what's really happening out there. On the, on the subject of the grip, I wouldn't want to have a really tight grip. What I really would like to do is try to imagine when I'm ready to impact the ball, I'm going to start tightening up the grip. So overall, pretty much a loose grip. You'll see some of these players doing this quite a bit. Probably a good idea. I actually play with two rackets, and I'm ambidextrous. I can play with either racket, meaning either arm, or with the two rackets, which I'll discuss in another segment. But what I've come to realize in tennis is there are really only two fingers and a thumb that you need for a good grip on a tennis racket and for the swing. So you've got sort of the old Texas Longhorn symbol. Well, those two fingers and the thumb are really basically all you really need for a good impact on the tennis ball. I can actually swing with the other two fingers, right, out of the picture. Now, does that mean I want to do that on a regular basis? No, of course not. I want to have my fingers wrapped around the uh, handle as well, but these are really the only things you need for a good impact and preventing the uh, unnecessary twisting of the racket on impact. So if you can strengthen this portion of your hand, right, you'll probably have more success. And what I like to do is swing the racket. That's a good way to do this, all right? So what I do when I'm ready to impact the ball, this will start to tighten up. After that, I'm loose again, ready to let those muscles relax. And then when I'm ready to impact the ball again, a tightening up. So that's about the best thing I can suggest for, for the grip. And this is mostly for preventing a polar rotation we talked about, the three moments of inertia, in plane, swing weight or out of plane, and the third out of plane or polar moment of inertia. Now let's talk about the racket and the spin, meaning spin you want to induce on the ball. People are saying, well, you have to have a good follow through and so on. I mentioned in another segment, even though you might feel that you're getting so-called on top of the ball or over the ball and so on, the ball is only, its dwell time on the racket for loose strings is about six or seven milliseconds, shorter for the higher tension strings, about four to five milliseconds, so not a long time. The reality is you're going to be cutting across the ball. The ball has long left your racket when you're starting to think about this turning of your wrist and so on. So the ball is long, excuse me, long gone when you're doing this kind of stuff. And we mentioned the three sweet spots and the dead spot, okay, on the rack. And I might as well just move this over here now. So the ball is long gone after the four to seven milliseconds. But how do you induce this topspin? Well, what you do is you have an approach angle. If you want to have a light amount of topspin, you're going to approach the ball at a less steep angle, right? So if we're talking about the angle being this way, all right, the steepness of the angle increasing as I go this way. So less steep, all right, versus more steep coming up on the ball like this, all right? So here I am saying, here comes the ball, less steep. I'm hitting the ball about like this as it is giving it some topspin. More topspin or a heavy topspin, I'm coming up on the ball like this, right? So I'm like this on the ball, much steeper angle, right? So to induce more topspin. Here I suppose we should use this B ball over here, right? So here we have a low angle, right? So low topspin steeper angle, much more topspin, all right? So as you're doing this in practice, lower, much higher, all right? So the more topspin, right, the steeper the angle, the less topspin, the shallower the angle. 
the opposite effect in terms of the underspin, although we talk about the same thing with, with the angles. Light underspin, heavy underspin, all right? Low angle, all right, so low angle, much steeper angle, right? Kind of a chopping down on the ball, much steeper angle. So more topspin, less topspin. Less, or excuse me, underspin. Let's do that one again. So more underspin, less underspin, right? And the reverse, less topspin, more topspin, all right? So that's about the best you can do. This turning the racket over and all that, the ball's gone. If you want to feel that you're doing that, that's fine. I mean, you have to follow through. So if it makes you happy, wonderful. But this is how you want to induce your spin. So topspin, underspin. So changing of the angle. All right, see you in the next segment. Take care.